Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the Scorpion ADF 9000 Air Helmet. There isn't enough choice for people who want an adventure helmet at the moment, as far as I'm concerned, but this new option from Scorpion is a very interesting arrival, in my opinion. We've got plenty of budget options already and also a smattering of top line premium models, but the new ADF 9000 Air comes in at around £350 and I've been impressed in my time wearing it. It's well made, it's got a good spec and it also comes with a spare tinted visor in the box which I think will increase the value for a lot of people. So let's run through the details. The shell is made from Ultra TCT, that's Scorpion's thermodynamic composite technology. It's composite fibre but with the resin pre-pregnated into the fibres which can give better control over dosage than when it's applied by hand. Weight for the ADF 9000 on our scales is 1675 grams and that's reasonable considering adventure helmets generally weigh a bit more than a normal full face helmet. There are vents at the chin on this helmet and also up top. The chin one runs on a slider inside the chin bar which is a bit awkward to get to especially if you want to do that while you're riding along. Sliding the switch on the inside up exposes two holes on the inside which then draw air through to the inside. I mostly wore this helmet on a Suzuki V-Strom 800DE behind a tall touring screen and that meant I could barely notice the airflow at all. But then I gave the helmet a go on my own Yamaha FZ1 Phaser which has a shorter screen and that chin vent was significantly better. Those two holes inside the chin bar are quite small but opening them up created a good flow of air through to the inside. To get that working you also need to open this rocking switch for the chin vent on the outside which you can also take off and then there's an accessory plate in the box that you can screw in place of that to give yourself a flat plate mount for an action camera. The top vents are sliding switches at either side of the helmet. They expose holes that will draw some air into the helmet just above the temples. Even when riding on my phaser with its short screen, I couldn't really feel much airflow from those. I'd say they're really about a long-term reduction of the temperature inside the helmet rather than giving you that cold blast that you feel from some helmets when the vents open. Air that does come in is able to travel through channels in the EPS impact liner and then escape through four outlet vents at the rear of the lid, which allow air to escape through a grill below the rear spoiler shape. The ADF 9000 Air comes with the peak fitted, but it's simple to remove and you can wear the helmet without it, which is known as street mode. The screws that hold the peak in place at each side are short enough to just screw back into the lid when there's no peak, and then you get a rubber cover to replace the slot that's left on top. Peaks often cause aerodynamic turbulence, so for long rides it might be worth running without the peak to absolutely be sure you avoid that, but I didn't experience much of a problem when riding the V-Strom 800DE. That bike has a touring screen, so there's more shelter than in standard trim, but the helmet was comfortable for rides for around two hours, which I thought was good. That's not to say it wouldn't be an issue on a different bike or if you're taller or shorter than me. You don't need to remove the peak to change the visor. It's a taller system. It does feel a bit brutal to just pull it out of its mount and then push it back in, but I have done it a few times now and it works well enough. The visor comes down in several steps before landing in a city position. This gives a gap of around 25 millimeters to allow plenty of air to come in. It's actually quite a big gap and I could ease it down a bit further to reduce that gap. It would stay like that until about 30 miles per hour, maybe a bit above that, but by 40 miles per hour, that was shut of its own accord. Visor is protected against mist by pinlock insert, which comes in the box, and it's pinlock 70, the middle grade of protection. The visor is cleverly designed to keep the curvature shallower on the section that you look through, but still allow it to seal around the chin bar at the base. On some adventure helmets, the curvature is quite extreme across all of the visor, and that means the pinlock has a hard time sealing to the inside surface, and it can also affect the optical clarity in a negative way. There are no such issues with this helmet because of the way it's designed. There is a bit of a downside though, which is a distorted view of the bike's clocks if you have to look through the complex shape at the bottom here. I found that meant dipping my head to get a proper view of the speedo when riding my phaser, although it was less of an issue with the V-Strom as the clocks sit higher up. If you need to alter the tension of the pin lock, then it's easy to adjust the pins to create a smaller or bigger distance between those pins. Turning the screws on the outside will rotate the pins to make the central posts closer to each other or further away and that gives you more or less room so you can get the pin lock seated properly. There's also that spare tinted visor which is only legal for off-road use but you don't need to be swapping visors all the time between tinted and clear unless you really want to and that's because there's a sun visor which operates on a rotating switch by the left ear. The amount of drop from that is okay, it's not brilliant, a bit more wouldn't hurt, but if it's not enough for you, you just fit the spare tinted visor and the whole thing's tinted. There's an anti-fog coating on the inner surface of the sun visor, which is useful if you're like me and you suffer from visor misting. So while we're on the subject of the visor, you can ride without that and use goggles instead, and even my biggest pair of Oakley goggles fitted inside just fine. 
and you don't need to remove the visor before you put goggles in as there's enough room for the strap to fit underneath when the visor is fitted. Okay then, let's move to the inside. The lining for the ADF 9000 is typically pleasant for Scorpion. It's all removable, which is easy to do, and there are emergency release tabs on the cheek pads as well, which hopefully you'll never need. It's antimicrobial to keep down the ponk, and it's designed to help you stay cool in summer and warm in winter. I found the liner very comfortable on both hot days and cool days. There's a removable chin curtain as well, and there's a split in that that helps get your finger in there to reach the vent switch that operates on the inside of the chin bar. The word air in the helmet's title refers to the air fit system. This means there are two air bladders, one behind each cheek pad. If you pump a red button on the inside of the chin bar, that inflates these two bladders and it moves the cheek pads closer to your face. And then there's a release button on the chin bar as well that deflates them. These might seem a bit gimmicky, but they will actually help fine tune the fit without having to mess around with different thicknesses of cheek pad. Also with the cheek pads, there's a quick fit system that gives you room for spectacle arms just at the top here. I tried my spectacles with this lid and I found they, I could get them in and they were okay, but it still did take a bit of fiddling about. The strap fastener is a D-ring system and these rings are made from titanium. Now, even I'm not going to cut the strap up to see how much weight that saves over a normal pair of D-rings, but in terms of weight saving, every little helps, I guess. There are recesses for intercom speakers behind the padding and those recesses are very roomy. They're big enough for 50 millimeter speakers and I haven't even come across intercom speakers that are that big yet. I found it easy to fit an off-the-shelf intercom. I put a Cardo Pactalk Edge on this helmet and I think pretty much every universal intercom will be easy to fit to this lid. Okay then, let's cover sizing, approvals and pricing. Sizes range from extra small to double extra large and there are three shell sizes that cover that range. Helmet sizes extra small and small share the smaller shell, medium and large go in the next shell and then the biggest shell covers XL and 2XL. The ADF 9000 Air is approved to ECE 2206, which is the latest standard for use on the road, and it's also got the ACU Gold sticker to show it can be used in competition. That's most likely to be useful if you wanted to wear this helmet with goggles in an off-road event. There's no rating from the UK government's Sharp Impact Testing Programme, and there's unlikely to be one because Sharp doesn't test adventure helmets. If they change that policy and they release a rating, then we'll add it to the description for this video. As for pricing, as we record this, plain colours for this helmet are 33999 and graphics like this one are 36999. That sits it squarely between entry level lids like the Bell MX9 Adventure and premium models from Shoei or Arai. There aren't many options in this middle ground and I've been impressed with this helmet. I've worn it on road and on dirt, I've worn it with goggles as well as the visor and I've also worn it without the peak. I found the turbulence from the peak to be lower than other adventure helmets I've tried. The build quality is good. Ventilation through the chin is very good as long as your bike allows air to reach that part of the helmet and the sun visor is effective too. The fact it comes with a tinted visor in the box will be a big plus for a lot of people as well. The flexibility for intercoms, that's another bonus as Scorpion aren't trying to limit your choice of intercom unit. For me, this is a serious contender in the adventure helmet category and it's well worth a look if you want something that's a cut above the basic options that are on the market. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Scorpion ADF 9000 Air, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.